Hey guys, it's Ryan with LED Gardener, and I'm going to take you through an experiment I did the other night. Ever since I got my first quantum board, I was wondering just how much current you can put through this thing before you risk blowing it up. So I have some pretty big drivers kicking around, and I decided that I'm going to put this to the test. So I grabbed one QB288, and I hooked it up to an HLG 600H54B, which is capable of doing 11.2 amps of current, which is more than enough to blow one of these boards up. But the problem is it only goes to 54 volts. So what I was thinking is that if I can run this board at 54 volts for long enough, it should get hot enough that maybe it'll go into thermal runaway and then pull a bunch of current and kill itself. For those who don't know what thermal runaway is, thermal runaway occurs when an LED heats up and then as a result its resistance decreases. They're kind of weird like that. But as the resistance decreases, that means the LED can then pull more current from a constant voltage driver. So a constant voltage driver is not holding that current steady. It's producing as much current as that LED wants up until the max current of the driver. So the problem with this setup is that as the LED heats up at the same voltage, say it sticks at 54 volts, it can pull more and more and more current. So you might start off at 54 volts and say 2000 milliamps. And then after an hour when this thing has risen 50 degrees, Celsius, you might be pulling, say, 3,000 milliamps at 54 volts. But that's sort of what I'm banking on, and I really want this thing to get hot and then pull a shitload of current and see if I can make it blow up. Okay, I'm just about all set now. I've got the components laid out on my test bench, which is actually a $15 IKEA side table. Both of my multimeters are fired up. I've got the wiring done, and we're ready to go. As you can see here, I've got a couple of wagos, and that's what I'm using to connect both of my multimeters, so one for current, one for voltage, to the circuit between the driver and the QB288, which is hanging above me here. I've got a potentiometer terminated onto the dimmer leads of this 600H, and to be honest, I was quite terrified at first to, <laughs> to turn this thing up because I was concerned that if I turned it up too much, it was just going to deliver a whole bunch of current and blow the light up right away, which would suck because I would gain nothing from it. But it turned out to, to be okay. I turned it all the way down and then just slowly ramped it up and started at about 2100 milliamps of current. I figured this would be a good place to start because that's a common drive current and I wanted to see just how stable this thing was at 2100 milliamps on a constant voltage system. You know, I was wondering if it heats up, is it going to pull more at this current or does it need more to start heating up or what was going on? So I started at 2100 and then I just kind of let it run for a while. Initially, temperatures were very low. We're talking about 40 degrees on the board itself, right dead center, and then about the same on the heatsink too, maybe a few degrees more. So after 15 minutes of run time, really not much has changed. We're still just under 2100 milliamps. The temperature has gone up considerably though, 56 degrees on top of the heatsink, and about 57 degrees on the bottom, right on the board itself. After another 15 minutes, so 30 minutes total, we have still no change. We've got the same current, so it's time to bump this thing up. And I went about 400 milliamps more to a total of 2500 and let this run for a little bit just to see if we can start getting some results. Another 15 minutes go by and we've got 45 minutes on the clock now and I'm starting to get a little bit bored because absolutely nothing is happening. It's rock solid. So I took the pot and I cranked it all the way to the max and I saw that I had 53.7 volts and just under 2800 milliamps. So I thought, hmm, it's kind of funny that I only have 53.7 volts if this is a 54 volt driver, and I was concerned maybe that the pot wasn't allowing the driver to output 100% power, like maybe it was not quite 100k ohms on the pot or something, so I cut it right off and I just had open dimmer leads and nothing changed, it was still 53.7 volts. But I disregarded and carried on, and then actually after the experiment, I decided to test the meters against one another, and I found that this x -Tech meter of mine was reading a fair bit off at this range, so the 53.7 you see for the rest of the experiment is actually 54.0 some volts. So keeping that in mind, I'm now running this thing flat out on a 600H54B and getting 2800 milliamps roughly, and uh, yeah, we've hit the hour mark, and it's it's really not picking up. It's not pulling anything more, unfortunately. And I don't really have any other way to increase the current to this thing aside from letting it heat up. 30 minutes later, and we've barely climbed 15 milliamps, you know, over 30 minutes. So it's still incredibly stable. And we're near the max of this board, too. The max of the QB288 
is 3,000 milliamps, according to HLG. And if you check the data sheet for the LM561C diode that this board uses, the max is actually 200 milliamps, so that would make the max for this board 3,200 milliamps. So we're getting very close to max, but yet we're not really having any issues with thermal runaway or heat or anything. So very impressed by that stability. Skipping way ahead to two and a half hours, and we've actually decreased in current. We're at 2.805 amps right now compared to an hour ago where we were 2.815 amps. The temperature is holding very steady. We're 71 degrees on the heat sink and just a few more degrees on the board itself. But this thing has been running for two and a half hours at 2,800 milliamps, and it's been stable for a long time. Like this temperature hasn't increased since you know the hour mark. So. I'm pretty confident that I could run this board at this current without issue. Now back to the task at hand, I remember I'm supposed to be pissed off because I'm unable to blow this thing up. So my first idea was to change the heatsink and get rid of the slate 2 which is doing a kick-ass job of cooling it and replace it with a slate 3 which looks to me like its thermal transfer performance is probably not quite as good as a slate 2 just because it's a much smaller heatsink, it's got smaller fins, so I think switching to the slate 3 should really boost up the temperature and hopefully cause it to run away. Once I got the board switched over onto the slate 3, I hooked it up to the driver again and I just left the pot off. So I left it at max current, turned it on full blast right off the bat, and was just going to see how long it took to get back up to temperature and it really was not long. There was a big difference in these two heat sinks and after about five minutes we were Pulling 2800 milliamps, like that was about the max I was getting on the slate 2. And I was already there on the slate 3 in 5 minutes. And then temperature wise, it was considerably higher too. I was already seeing temperatures of 74, 75 degrees after just 5 minutes of running at full tilt. So you could tell there was a big difference between the two heat sinks after just a few minutes time. In 10 minutes, we were creeping up to almost 2900 milliamps and the temperature of the back of the heat sink was all the way up to 83 degrees. Then moving forward another 20 minutes, so we got 30 minutes total. The current has edged up over 2900, we're at 2935 milliamps. And the heat sink has increased quite a bit. Now we're up to 92 degrees. That was the max that I got off of this heat sink was 92 degrees. And I actually let this thing run for another about an hour and I didn't record the rest of it but this is where it's stabilized at. It was around 92, 93 degrees, and that same current, just over 2,900 milliamps, I could not even make it break 3,000 over that hour. So unfortunately, at this point, I realized, okay, well, I don't have enough current to blow these QB288s up. My assumption that they would run away when I got them close to max current was wrong. I mean, we're, we're very close to 3,000 milliamps and they're not running away on me. And I don't really have any other power that I can throw at them. So I decided, okay, well, time to switch gears here. Let's get rid of the QB288 and we'll switch to a QB304. And that should be way easier to blow up because the max on these things is only 1,600 milliamps, right? And I have a lot of drivers that exceed that. So I'll take one of these QB304s and this will be easy peasy, I'll just hook up a, like a 240HC2100. And this thing should be packing more than enough power to overload these diodes and make this thing fail. Okay, here we go, I've got the QB304 lined up and ready to be destroyed. But it's, it's such a shame, isn't it? Because it's such a pretty board, but this is for science, so it's gotta be done. So let's just go ahead and fuck this thing up. You'll notice for this set of tests that I've got a new replacement meter here. It's a Fluke 287 that I got for a steal of a deal off of Kijiji. And I don't know if you guys have Kijiji in the States, but it's kind of like our Craigslist here in Canada. Anyway, got it for a great deal, so I scrapped the X-Tech, which is reading poorly, and replaced it with that. For this round of testing, my patience was really wearing thin because I wanted results. So in the first two minutes, I was running at about 1.2 amps. Keep in mind the max is now 1.6 amps for this board instead. And then after another couple minutes, I decided, all right, this isn't really doing much. Let's bump this thing up and try to heat the board up a lot quicker. So I went from 1.2 to 1.4. We're getting closer and closer to max. And it's nice because I'm actually going to be able to exceed the max this time if I get that far, right? And then eventually, we're 12 minutes in. I've got this thing at pretty much exactly, nearly exactly 1.6 amps. And this is the max for this board, right? We're at the, the absolute max, according to Samsung themselves, 
for these diodes. So let's let this thing run. I've got my iPhone camera trained on the lights just in case something happens when it inevitably does. And oh, it's, it's, it's 20 minutes. Eight minutes have gone by and it hasn't blown up. We're 75 degrees on the slate too, just like kind of like the other test. We're a little bit hotter this time. But again, nothing is happening. <laughs> We're 30 minutes in now. Running at absolute max, temperature is 76.3, so it's increased a little bit, not a whole lot, but no explosions, no fireworks, no fires, no fizzling or crackling, nothing. Let's bump it up more. So we're at max now, let's exceed max. You know, I was cringing as I did this, it just felt so wrong. I'm up to 1.8 amps now. Fuck it, let's go to 2 amps. We're at 2,000 milliamps, the thing is at 92 degrees, and we're 40 minutes in, it doesn't care. Let's take it all the way to max. We're at 2.15 amps. So, <laughs> the bottom of the board is reading 100 degrees. Here's an hour, we're an hour into it, it's been running at almost 2.2 amps. So what is that? 2200 milliamps divided by 8 would be 275 milliamps per diode. So we're like 140% of the max of each of these diodes, and I just can't get this thing to die. At this point, it's been running for an hour and 45 minutes, roughly. The thing is hotter than the sun, and uh, it's still going strong. So I'm going to admit defeat this round. I don't know, have you guys been able to blow these things up? If so, please leave me a comment. I'm very curious as to how much power you need to cook them, and I vow I will destroy one of these boards with a bigger driver as soon as I can afford one. But for now, this thing has got me beat. So, like I say, if you've blown one up, please tell me how much power it took because I'm curious now. As always, thank you very much for watching, and stick around because I've got some more good stuff coming, and you will, mark my words, you will see the demise of one of these boards.